Green Sky Bluegrass, welcome back to E-Town. Congratulations on your success. Congratulations on your new record. You are a band that does not come from Tennessee or, or Kentucky or North Carolina and being mostly from Michigan. I don't know, if does that give you a little more uh, freedom to just choose whatever you want to play and whatever kind of songs you want to write? Absolutely. Yeah. Is there a Michigan sound? Yeah, we're it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is, there is now. There is now, I suppose, yeah. I don't, you know, like That's what, what Billy String said, too, actually. Uh, oh, Billy. Wait a minute. Same sound. Yeah, same, yeah, same sound. sound, yeah. No. He's right. Yeah, he's right. You know, when I first... Same with Bob Seger. Right. Right. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Ted Nugent. Yeah. And Aretha. Madonna. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, no. Kid Rock. Yeah, Kid Rock. Okay. <laughs> you would do that, yeah. Um, no, it's... You guys are, you guys are un, untethered, I can tell. Um, I, I like that. I'm tethered. <laughs> it Rump has, roll. <laughs> <laughs> Your ankle bracelets are off. That's not, that's not, totally, that's not totally true. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the cuffs are for? <laughs> it's his. I'm talking about him. Shoot. I, um, you know, it's, it's, it's funny because it's not that long ago since you guys won the Telluride. Uh, bluegrass band, uh, T- Telluride Bluegrass Festival band contest. That was 2006, right? Yeah, just a measly 13 years. Yeah. Well, to a guy like me, that doesn't seem like that long ago. <laughs> We've been in a band the whole time, so yeah. just time flies when you're driving. You right. Know? But uh, do you remember that year you, you, you entered the contest and who else was in it or who else was playing at the festival or who else you were like, hope, you know, uh, hoping to jam with or anything like that? Do you remember that? <laughs> I was going to make the no joke, but yeah, I do. I definitely remember. Uh, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Pregnant pause. Uh, hey, baby. Sammy. <laughs> Sam Bush was there. Good call. Uh, Thanks for the audience. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's Good been call. There. He's been Sam there Bush every year. He's there, he's there every year. That's true, yeah. We could do this really well. Sam Bush was there. Jerry Douglas was there. Nick Forrester was there. You know, it's like, it's pretty, it's pretty, yeah. All right. Okay. We'll, we'll we'll move on. This is that was that was a, for for ten points. That was a tough question, but we're gonna move, we're gonna move on. Um, the uh, the the new record, and I, I I just say it because it's it's an interesting. You know, it seems like it's been a long time, but at the same time, it's um, it's been relatively quick to go from that entering the band cost ten, contest, which means the next year you get a slot on the main stage, and then. Um, it wasn't that long after that that you just were playing, and now I think you're playing there a bunch this year, this coming festival. So it's it's become another one of those spots where you're right at home. Yeah, we've been playing it every year for a while now. We call it the Yacht Club when yeah. you get when you get invited into the Every Year Club. The Yacht Club, that's exactly it's what the it yacht is. Yacht Club. Yeah. You get a, you yeah. get like a robe. Yeah. <laughs> we don't get we haven't gotten a yacht, but yeah. there's no it's yacht. Still. It's just a robe. You get a yeah. The, yeah, the yacht is in the dock. The right. club is like yeah. Oh, in yeah. The, you know. Just, I'm not going to tell you what happens at 25 years. Just you know. We know. Yeah, yeah. We know. Okay. You forget the names of the bands that yeah. you played the contest with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I was thinking about the house band, and I'm I'm trying I'm trying to rally for um, this other band that I was in once upon a time to become like the next house band, but we're gonna we want to call it the halfway house band. <laughs> <laughs> I love that joke. <laughs> I think that'd be really Speaking good. Of tethers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Only at Town Park. Um, and then, uh, but now you guys also have your own festival. You have, um, which is which is a whole nother whole nother layer of being able to think about. Oh wow, you've got to actually think about parking and and uh, yeah. camping and portalettes and all that stuff. You do? <laughs> Maybe you don't. Yeah. No, we do. Someone on your team does. No, we yeah. think about portalettes a lot. Um, <laughs> but but in all seriousness, we have a, uh, you know, there's there's not much that we've done more research on. Than festivals, this is you true. Know, like yeah. we we put our time in as yeah. we, like we should be able to throw a really good festival because we have spent lots of time right. at other people's festivals. You know, it's like right. uh, some of which you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> who who are, who are you? And I think. Uh, I just, uh, I, I know that it, it must be nice because really, no, I, I, I think it's as, as much as we're just kind of joking around, it's a cool thing that you've 
created a sound and built an audience and, and worked hard to play all these places and worked hard playing clubs and working your way up and building a fan base. And then when you get to have your own festival, it must feel a little bit like a family reunion. And you get to see a whole bunch of people, as you often do, singing, singing your lyrics back to you. That must be an amazing feeling. Absolutely an amazing feeling. And the, like the bands we have, too, are a lot of the bands that we go on the road with for a while. So we get to have them all to have them meet each other is really cool. You know, like we have these, we have this front band we like, Fruition, and this band we like, Chris Jacobs' band, but they haven't met each other. So then we get to have this event and we're like, hey, yeah. cool friend, this is my other cool friend. Yeah. You know what to do. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think it also, it bears mentioning like, yeah, we're you know, like, we're, all, we're totally joking around because you, Nick is our friend and, you know, we're all friends and it's easier to like make jokes about how, is rather than be like, yeah, we're really lucky and everything's going amazing and, uh, you know, it's easier to kind of blow it off and make jokes about it for us, but it's not certainly not lost on us like how grateful we are to be in the position we are. It's yeah. it's ridiculously cool. Uh, we're incredibly lucky, and that's not lost on us. Yeah. You know? But it's always easier to joke about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we we like both around here. Actually. Jokes are fun. Yeah. Um, and speaking of not jokes. Um, and family reunions. You're about to be uh, a family man of an, with another dimension here pretty soon, right, Paul? Coming up? Yes, I am. My child is here in utero. Yeah. <laughs> Seven Wolf. Um, br briefly, I want to talk just a, a little bit about the new record. It's called All for Money, which of course is an ironic title. No, I, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> until you read the lyrics. <laughs> And the lyrics are, you know, what if it were all about the dough? And of course, it's about it's, it's a heartfelt song about uh, going for love instead of money, which is which is the sentiment, right? That's it. That's it. Yeah. It's about the fans. It's about uh, the relationship and the responsibility with that comes with having fans. You know, these people that come out and see us all the time. Uh, it's a it's a blessing, and you know I I hesitate sometimes to say that it's also a burden because that sounds negative, but it it is like there's a responsibility involved with great with great yeah. power comes responsibility. <laughs> uh, that's but that's what sort of what it's about, and I struggled with how to write that song for a long time because I was hesitant to complain. It's not a complaint, you know, but it's just a um, it's an acknowledgement that there's a responsibility, kind of like fatherhood. Yes. Hey, you made him real quiet. That was pretty good, Nick. Was, you bet. Did I set you up for that? That was just great. I think the, um, the, the interesting thing, too, is about um, you guys spent some time making this record. You were in Asheville, North Carolina, mostly. And, um, and you wrote, Paul, you wrote three quarters of the songs, I think. Were, were most of them done before you got in the studio? Or did you do some of that shaping, shifting, and moving things around once you're in the recording mode? Uh, so, you know, some of them... You don't know, that's why you asked. Uh, you know. Why do, why do I say that? You know? You know? Yeah, you don't. Uh, yeah. But some of them were done, but others of them were, you know... <laughs> I, exposed, I exposed my tick. Now it's going to be a problem. <laughs> my tell. Exposed uh, some of them weren't very done at all. Like that first song we just played... <laughs> hey, you asked, are you even listening? <laughs> Hey, you lost us that you, had, you exposed your tick, <laughs> okay? And so you, Nick and I were over here laughing at that because... Radio edit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just told on, I reassured Anders that it was the letter T. 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 <laughs> yeah. well, it's radio, it's ra yeah. Yo, you didn't get it that whole time? No, I didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're over here. But it's radio, so you could have exposed, you could have exposed anything you wanted. <laughs> it wouldn't matter. Anyway, okay. you, were, you were saying, Paul. That's a good question. <sighs> okay, here we so, go. Yes. I'm, I'm going to change. I'm going to change the subject just a little bit. I was going to answer the question. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do you even remember the question? Yes. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Uh, they weren't all done. Some were more done than others, and some of the ones that were very not done became the coolest things. The first tune we played, "Wish I Didn't Know," was this real simple chord progression thing and I presented it to the band and I'm like, I, you know, I don't know if this is like my, the greatest song I've ever written. The content's a little simple and stuff. And then we just came up with this idea how to arrange it and we recorded it in one day, worked on it all day. And when we left, we were like, wow, 
That is not what that was yesterday. Mm-hmm. That was a very triumphant day for sure. Because at the, at the start of the day, we're sort of like, "Hey, is this is this should this go on the record?" And then by the end of the day, we're like, "We had we had we you know, it was a sleeper song, fatherhood." And we, we, are, we made a baby. Are, yeah. You know, we those, made a baby out of nothing. Those are fun. Like the <laughs> something. Yeah. The. Uh, <laughs> I want to ask you also as a songwriter, Paul, that because that, that, uh, we're talking about the responsibility you feel to your audience and to your life, and your live scene is so, is so important. Um, as a songwriter, do you sometimes feel like, well, okay, this is a song that feels right in the studio, feels right with us in the band, but is that, do you have to think about how is that going to work for a big crowd? How is that going to play for a bigger audience? Does that affect your choices as a songwriter? Absolutely. And Interesting, with this record, it was different than previous records. There were so many moments in all the records we've made where we'd be recording something and we, we use that expression, serve the song that everyone says. And like we're in the studio and recording this waltz that's super sad, Beauty and Pain, this song from a couple albums ago. And we're like, we're never going to play this live because it's sad and it's slow, but we need to record it this way because it's what the song deserves. And with this record, we kind of evolved to like serve the show and it's not like we compromise the integrity of the intention for each song or the what it should be or something but we were just like we were writing a set list in the studio sort of and like you know this this one that's in three four time let's play it like aggressive so that we want to play it on stage and stuff and i think it's working you know yeah, yeah. yeah. now you know now you know <laughs> <laughs> and um and that doesn't make you a sellout just so you know <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't that you're not compromising your artistic integrity on behalf of the commerce <laughs> thank you despite the title of the record <laughs> that, that just means you're adapting to this the real situation on the in reality when you're out there touring that's cool I, i'm glad to know that i'm going to shift gears really quickly because we've got much more music to get to anders i just think it's such an interesting um not a coincidence, but it's an interesting happenstance that, that your parents are the winners of the Achievement Award this week. And did you know that when you're, um, when you're growing up, did you know they were, they were generous, civic-minded, and, and uh, you know, righteous f- folks? Yeah, I really did. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's, it, was never, it was never not apparent. Um, they were always... Well, they were always trying to impart it on me as well as, you know, and not like in a pushy way, but, you know, they was always... They always sort of believe that uh, serving kind of the greater good of, of uh, you know, humanity or whatever you want to call it was, it was always an important thing. And, and uh, even when I started playing music professionally for a living, um, you know, it took a while for them to realize that, like, and again, not, it's not in a negative way, but it just took, you know, now they see what I'm doing and it's like, uh, I believe that in making people happy for three hours of their lives every night like i'm making a uh, a difference yeah. a pretty good difference as well you know and they yeah. and they see that now and that's cool you know whether yeah. um yeah and it's cool because uh you know again we're talking about how lucky we are to be successful at what we do and have all these amazing fans and get to travel around the country and play in amazing venues to amazing people um do your fans know that your parents were both professional tennis players I don't think so. I don't think most of your fans knew that. And so I'm just curious, did you play uh, as a family? Was that a, like tennis a big part of your childhood? You know, kind of. Uh, it was, and, and, I was, and I was. Did they pin a lot of hopes on you in your tennis game when you were a young person? They had very little hopes for me. Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was the third son. Okay. Um, so I was rebellious. So I was, they were like, you'd be good at tennis. And I was like, hell no, I'm not playing tennis. You know, like, <laughs> but you I'm played playing lacrosse. You played lacrosse. Like, this is a really good story. the opposite. When he r- reached out to become a member of our band, uh, Dave told his brother that we were adding this guy to the band named Anders. And his brother was like, Anders? I went to lacrosse camp with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah he almost got us both kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> Total coincidence. It, but yeah. that, that's Was cool. that the really good story? But, but uh, in, in all seriousness, <laughs> we'll be here all night. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's band, um, it's, band dynamics. Yeah. That's what that. That's what that's called. Yeah, I mean, we're we're 
the five of us are best friends, which is helpful in driving right. around the country for a living. You know, yeah. music is cool too, but you know. Uh, well, we're gonna hear from uh, your mom in just a little while, Anders. But right now, uh, she'll set us straight. She'll tell the real See, look, story. These people are just like me. They think I it's a your wait. mom joke. Every time you say we're your mom, <laughs> it's like it's, you know, just like by default. Your mom. I'm talking to your mom later, I'm like, I'm either in trouble or there's a punchline. I don't know. But the thing is. The thing is, she's amazing, and you'll see. You'll see. Yeah. It's Nick Forrester calling from the principal's office. <laughs> it, could, it, it does feel a little like that, but I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm nervous. You know, don't ask her about me. I'm excited. I also feel like this entire interview is just going to get cut out of the entire <laughs> radio show for sure. We're not going to keep any radio of this out here. <laughs> it's going to be a standalone viral video. <laughs> um, yeah, I will say that um, Anders's mom uh, did tell us that he started out on the drums and that they had to, as soon as he got his own drum set, they had to find a room where they could close the door. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, but he, he shifted shortly thereafter, yeah. Yeah, well, it, if your parents buy you drums, they love you. Right. Because those things are annoying, especially when you suck at them. Um, and so that's real, that's true love. That's true love. Um, but I do, I was telling Nick this earlier, and it maybe bears repeating. Um, I remember, so I was playing, I started playing drums, and then I played some guitar. I was starting to play guitar as well. I remember my friend came over to the house, and, and um, I was like, hey man, check out, check this out. You know what song this is? And I was like, dun, dun, ch, dun, 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 ch, dun, 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 ch. And he goes, dude, that's every song. <laughs> and I was, so you were I, was, I was heartbroken. <laughs> And I stopped playing drums the next day and went right to guitar. That was it. You know, I'm, I'm totally serious. Yeah, it really happened. These are just some of the few stories that we're going to be diving into in just a few oh, minutes yeah. when we speak with Anders' mom, the oh, so from Pennsylvania. The Achievement Awards yeah. for yeah. <laughs> This me alive. is your life. No, uh, I appreciate you guys visiting again. Again, congratulations on your success on the road and uh, with the new record. We've got lots more music to get to. Please welcome back to E Town, Green Sky, Bluegrass. Yeah. Hi, this is Nick Forster from E-Town. If you want to stay up to date with all the performances, interviews, and behind-the-scenes footage, click the subscribe button. Thanks.